Hey folks, it's Mike with the Maine Primitive Skills School. We're doing a class with a high school group here and uh, this component is the shelter building piece and we're sharing some basic tenets around uh, universal concepts around building effective shelters. Keep in mind the shelter needs to be a fire dependent shelter. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a fire in front of it. Don't make a fire. Pretend. Dang it. Use your imagination. I have no imagination. Okay. Now keep in mind the thermodynamics. Okay, you need a fire. You need, you need that angle. Okay, with the radiation. Okay. All right. So you have ten minutes. Go. Uh, both fire-dependent shelters and shelters that don't require a fire to not just stay warm, but to be comfortable through extreme conditions. And so these high school kids are learning about how to identify the mechanisms by which we freeze to death or by which we either get acute or chronic hypothermia. And these mechanisms are conduction, uh, which is the contact with something larger or denser than you that is colder than you, and the, the phenomenon that happens where your body heat is actively being taken, your core is actively being uh, robbed of its body heat through the mechanical action of conduction. Another concept that we cover is radiation how building a shelter, no matter what materials you use, the smaller the interior, the more effective it is to heat up using not just your core temperature, but maybe hot rocks or a small fire. You use less firewood to heat up a smaller volume. Like Mike was explaining, you want to make it about a mummy bag size. So what we did is we carved a channel through that snow, leveled it off, and we laid down boughs on top of that. But underneath, we've made a bed because you want to be off the snow, obviously, because that snow is still cold. So you're going to be losing heat through conduction if you're not up and off of that. And a smaller volume still can be heated with your core temperature, which means you don't have to tend a fire all night to stay not just alive, but warm. A small opening, and you saw that design of the igloo where the bed is raised up above, and that's a heat sink because, as you know, warm air rises and cold air falls, so that allows the warm air to stay up in a nice pocket that you can warm with just your body, so you're not needing a fire to keep this shelter warm. Radiation is the natural process by which your core temperature radiates out in all directions towards the absolute zero of space. When we make that small shelter space, we allow for our radiant body heat to be trapped in a bubble of air around us called dead air space. We do this with sleeping bags, we do this with large buffy coats called the insulation layer, and we should be doing this with our transitionary or survival shelters just because you use less materials to build them and they're more efficient to heat. And the last one is convection, getting out of the wind. Think if we feel a draft, that means our door is too big or porous, or that we didn't put enough debris on our walls, or that there's a space at our feet where the ridge pole leaves the, the shelter. So problem solving involves diagnostics like, ah, oh, my feet were cold before I went to bed. Well, add more debris at your feet. Check for holes and drafts that are causing a cross breeze to go above your head and down through your feet. Or my cheeks and nose were cold. Well, then your door's too big. Or when I went to sleep, before I went to sleep, the first thing that cold was, the first thing that got cold was my shoulders and my hips. Well, that means you were getting your body heat robbed through conduction because you didn't have enough materials between you and the earth. So you can troubleshoot what mechanical action, conduction, radiation, convection, or perspiration, um, respiration, is occurring by the symptoms that come before you succumb to an overall body chill or emergent hypothermia. So this shelter follows those concepts of preventing conduction, uh, capturing radiant body heat, and also preventing the wind from whisking away your body heat through uh, convection. This particular design uh, has been around for hundreds of years in one form or another, but the modification of building up a mound and then creating your snow trench in a mound was shared with us by Brian Manning of Snow Walker uh, 13, I believe his YouTube channel is, and he runs his own programs. is a heck of a flint napper and uh, one of uh, one of our valued community members here. But they would have a fire built up here, a small.
smaller opening and they would have a reflective wall to reflect that heat back into the shelter. The shelter itself would also be a little bit smaller. So this is kind of a hybrid. You're using some modern materials, but most of the stuff is of natural origin. So right now it is about 45 degrees in here. Oh, this is so cool. Kind of small in here, but you can stand up and stretch out, which is a lot different than that temporary shelter. All these poles are mostly balsam fir, and what we did is we put these two stanchions here and set up kind of an arch, and then you just lay them across it. This is called a rocket mass heater, and if you put your hand on it, I had a fire earlier, that rock is still hot. So this radiates heat into the shelter, and it's got a um, it's got an exhaust system that goes underneath this nice fine sleeping platform that I sleep on. So it's kind of like a central heating for this entire shelter, and that's the reason why I sleep up here. Is the same concepts that we were talking about with the cold air that stays down towards the bottom of this shelter. And if you wanted to get really fancy, you could dig down and have a heat sink, which some of our other ones do. It just wasn't really possible with this one.